Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Friday, October 14th, 2016. Commissioner Repenning, James, and Jacinto are present. President James, we have a quorum. May we start with Bureau introductions, please, starting with Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, April Mancha with Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, Julie Allen, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Kimberly Fitzpatrick, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Mark Simon, Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. President James, we received speaker cards under general public comment. We have no commentary under the Neighborhood Council and no speaker cards at the time for any of the items for today. Um, okay, then um, let's close our Neighborhood Council category of commentary. We have some administrative items on the agenda. Um, assessment hearings from the Bureau of Street Lighting are agenda items uh, 1 through 17. Their assessment hearings for various council districts, um, including uh, council districts 1, 5, 7, 12, 4, 2, 14, 8, 3, and those are it. Ruben Flamenco on um, the assessment hearings this morning. Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. For the record, the hearings for items 1 through 17 were originally scheduled for Wednesday, October 12th. We were informed on October 5th that the board would not be meeting on October 12th. We then sent out notices to all affected property owners on October 5th, informing them of today's change and that the hearings have been changed from October 12th to October 14th, as well as letting them know that the council hearing still remains for Wednesday, October 19th. Items 1 through 4, 6 through 11, and 13 through 16 pertain to lighting districts which we are creating in conjunction with private development projects. Item 12 pertains to a lighting district which we are creating in conjunction with MTA's Crenshaw Boulevard LAX Transit Corridor Project. This is a re-ballot per council uh, request. Ballots were mailed along with the following disclaimer by, seat by Council District 8, quote, it has come to the attention of the Office of Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson that a number of businesses with intentions to vote in the previous street lighting assessment election either did not receive their ballot or did not clearly understand the instructions for ballot submission. The council office has therefore requested another ballot be mailed. We apologize for any inconvenience, unquote. Items 5 and 17 pertain to lighting districts which we are creating in conjunction with the Bureau of Street Lighting initiated LED conversion project. Only public parcels are impacted. No private parcels are included in these two lighting districts. Ballots for items 1 through 17 were mailed on September 1st, 2016. Ballots for items 1 through 17 must be received by the City Clerk's Office by next Wednesday, October 19th. We have not received any objections to date on items 1 through 17, and that includes item 12. We received some few phone calls about people inquiring about the re-ballot. We simply referred those people to the council office. Okay, and that was on, uh, that was on item 12. Item 12. So let's take um, uh, 1 through 11, and well, first of all, a couple of questions on 1 through 17. Uh, Regarding the date change for the hearing, any uh, inquiries or response regarding either hearing date here, October 12th or October 14th? No. Okay. Um, any uh, uh, response regarding the proposed um, council hearing date of October 19th, 2016? No. Um, so for uh, agenda item number 12, um, uh, well, first let's, let's take uh, I'll make a motion then on 1 through 11 and 13 through 17 uh, that uh, we adopt those, uh, those items as stated in the board report. Seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any questions? Any objections? Then we'll adopt 1 through 11 and 13 through 17. On agenda item number 12, um, Rutman, would you just again summarize that item itself, so we have that as a standalone, and we'll, um, and then if I have any additional questions, I'll ask those and we'll move accordingly. Sure. Item 12 pertains to a lighting district which we are created in conjunction with MTA's Crenshaw Corridor Project. This is a re ballot per council request. Uh, we added, when we sent the new ballots out, we added a disclaimer per council, and it reads, quote, it has come to the attention of the Office of Council Member Marquis Harris Dawson that a number of businesses with intentions to vote in the previous street lighting assessment election either did not receive their ballot or did not clearly understand the instructions for ballot submission. The council office has therefore requested another ballot be mailed. We apologize for any inconvenience, unquote. 
So this was the reballot that was requested. That's what we're doing. So to cure the confusion, that's what agenda item number 12 did. Correct. Okay. Um, then with that clarification, then I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number 12 as well. Seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 12. Any issues sending 1 through 17 forthwith? We'll send numbers 1 through 17 forthwith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Flamenco. On agenda item, um, let's go to the street closure that we have. Um, agenda item number 25, Council District 14, Bureau of Engineering and Street Services. Street closure, Second Street between Broadway and Spring Street, <coughs> October 15th, that's tomorrow through November 19th, 2016. Roughly a um, four-week uh, closure or so. We'll get more details on that in a moment. Um, and uh, due to uh, CEQA guidelines, there is a bit to read into the record here on agenda item number 25, which I will do. I recommend that the board, one, find that the Board of Public Works has reviewed and considered the information in the Regional Connector Transit Corridor Project Draft Environmental Impact Statement, Environmental Impact Report, it's transmittal number one, and the Regional Connector Transit Corridor Project Final Environmental Impact Statement, Environmental Impact Report, that was transmittal number two. Number two, find that the California Public Resources Code, Section 21166, and the California Environmental Quality Act Guidelines, Section 15162, on the basis of substantial evidence contained in the whole record, that since certification of the EIS and EIR, there have been no changes to the project, changes with respect to the circumstances under under which the temporary street closure specified in recommendations number 7 through 10 that I'll get to below is being undertaken, or new information of substantial importance concerning the project, which cause new significant environmental effects or a substantial increase in the severity of the previously identified significant effects, and therefore no subsequent EIR and no supplemental EIR is required for the subject temporary street closure. Number three, adopt the January 20th, 2012 Mitigation Monitoring and Reporting Program prepared by Metro as it pertains to construction impacts, including in particular mitigation measures that are listed in the agenda item. Number four, find under the CEQA guidelines section 15091 that changes or alterations have been required in or incorporated into the project which reduce or substantially lessen the significant environmental effects as identified in the EIS and EIR. Further find that there is no feasible alternative or additional feasible mitigation measures within the board's powers that would substantially lessen or avoid any significant effect the project would have on the environment. Number five, adopt the attached CEQA findings of fact and statement of overriding considerations. That's transmittal number three. As it pertains to the temporary street closure and find that the economic, social, technological, and other benefits of the project outweigh its significant and unavoidable impacts. Number six, specify that the Metro Transit Division of the Bureau of Engineering, located at 1149 South Broadway, and the Board of Public Works, located at 200 North Spring Street, and other relevant City of Los Angeles departments, will be the custodians of the documents or other material which constitute the record of the proceedings upon which the Board's decision is based. Number seven, approve the request to temporarily close Second Street between Broadway and Spring Street starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow, October 15, 2016, that's Saturday, and ending at 6 p.m. November 19, 2016, uh, that's a Saturday. Um, looks like five weeks, subject to the conditions identified within the report. Number eight, approve the peak hour exemption request, that's transmittal number four, on 2nd Street between Broadway and, Street, and Spring Street to allow construction work in the morning peak hours at 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and afternoon peak hours, 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m., starting October 15th and ending November 19th, 2016, subject to the conditions identified within the report. Number nine, authorize the city engineer and the director of the Bureau of Street Services to administratively approve one additional week of the closure, that's recommendation number seven above, if unforeseen conditions are encountered which delay the completion of the construction. Number 10, authorize the city engineer to administratively approve one additional week of the peak hour exemption, that's recommendation number eight above, if unforeseen circumstances or conditions are encountered which delay the completion of the construction, all of this in connection with the Metro Regional Transit Corridor Project to facilitate the construction of roadway decking for the second and Broadway station. Curtis G. on number 25. Good morning. I am Curtis G. from the Bureau of Engineering Metro Transit Division. 
The Metro Regional Connector Project is a 1.9 mile underground light rail system through downtown Los Angeles that will extend from the Gold Line, Little Tokyo Station to the 7th Metro Center. Metro and their contractor, Regional Connector Constructors, RCC, is requesting a full street closure with peak hour exemption for 2nd Street between Broadway and Spring Street starting at 8 a.m. October 15, 2016, Saturday, and ending 6 p.m. November 19, 2016, Saturday. The requested peak hour exemption is to allow construction work to take place within public streets in the morning peak hours, which are from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., and afternoon peak hours, which are from 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. This full street closure request is to facilitate utility relocation, pile installation, and the installation of structural decking system needed to carry traffic while construction continues below the deck to construct a second and Broadway light rail transit station. Decking work will be phased from west to east. This closure request is for phase one. Immediately following this closure, Metro and RCC plan to request phase two, which consists of a full, continuous full street closure of 2nd Street between Broadway and Spring Street with weekend closures of the intersection of 2nd Street and Spring Street. The phase two street closure request will be submitted separately because the associated worksite traffic control plans have not been completed yet. I therefore ask that the board to adopt this board report with the recommendations that are listed in the board report, which have been stated at the start of the agenda item and with the conditions stated here. One, pursuant to the City of Los Angeles and Metro Master Cooperative Agreement MCA, City Council Contract Number C104288 and joint Board Joint Report Number One, Regional Connector Special Permitting Process, adopted September 12, 2014, associated permit fees shall be waived. Two, permitting shall obtain all necessary approvals for construction work related to the Atforma Street closure prior to implementing any and all street closure related activities. Three, permitting shall comply with peak hour exemption conditions as outlined in the Los Angeles Municipal Code sections 62.61D and 80.06.1. The peak hour exemption can be revoked at any time by the city engineer. Uh, this concludes my board report, staff report. Uh, thank you, and representatives from Metro, RCC, LADOT, and the Bureau of Engineering Environmental Management Group are here today if there are any questions. Thank you, <clears throat> Curtis. First of all, I would like to um, thank uh, your office and Metro, DOT, um, um, for the additional um, environmental background work that was done in preparation of this this morning. Um, secondly, um, my recollection is, and I was trying to find it in the board report, all of the necessary approvals have been obtained uh, as you stand here this morning. They may not have been, all have been completed by the time the board report was submitted, uh, subject to confirmation this morning, but, but as of the time of this hearing, everything is, is buttoned up and ready to go, correct? That is correct. Yeah, the worksite traffic control plans at the time of the writing were the only pending items, but that was uh, successfully approved and signed yesterday. Okay. So, um, so all the approvals are, are obtained, and, and thank you for reading the conditions into the record. But so, just so the records were clear, so um, everything is done on that, right? That is correct. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions. Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, President James. Uh, Curtis, thank you for the report and uh, uh, to the Bureau and all the department, LADOT, and uh, engineering uh, for working together to in metro of course to ha help this happen i had a question regarding the traffic mitigation plan i think asus was uh, briefing and wanted to ask a question regarding the cumulative impact and management ongoing in the regional uh, connector project is um, yeah may i call um jesus serrano from la oh, man, sorry. transportation yeah. Good morning. Just wanted to get an update on the overall um, traffic management plan mitigation. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Jesus Serrano with LADOT, Transportation Engineer. Uh, as uh, usual, uh, the TMP uh, examined the impacts of this closure on the immediate uh, vicinity of the closure as well as the 
the regional impact to the traffic in the downtown area. Uh, it yielded the, the typical or traditional uh, mitigation measures. Uh, primarily, we're, we're talking about deploying uh, traffic officers at key intersections to manage traffic and avoid gridlock of the intersections. Uh, also, uh, we will be implementing timing changes to assist with the traffic flow in the area. There had been also uh, mitigation uh, measures put in for the second and Broadway full closure, which they are moving from to this closure now. Uh, some of those measures included the installation of a camera at uh, First and uh, Broadway to help monitor traffic remotely. Uh, they also installed some uh, striping and signal improvements. Uh, one, one signal improvement was done at First and Hill Street to help out with the left turn movement uh, as part of the detour route, uh, as well as Third and uh, Hill Street, there was a provision of additional striping to create a, a right turn pocket again to help with the right turn movement as part of the detour. Uh, as far as any complaints that we've received, there have been uh, no uh, unusual complaints as far as the traffic, uh, no requests, uh, no reports of accidents, uh, things like that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, from the closure we're moving from, again, from the full closure of 2nd Broadway to this closure, we believe it'll be somewhat of an improvement as far as traffic flow is concerned because now we will have Broadway return to operation. So north and south traffic will flow a lot better. 2nd uh, Street closure, again, has been something that's been in there now for a few months now, and the traffic has rerouted uh, pretty, pretty well. So, Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sinto. Commissioner Davis. I just wanted to confirm that the council office, I guess it's Council District 14, has been involved and obviously doesn't have any opposition or any concerns about the, the closure. That is correct. Yeah, uh, we got confirmation from Council District 14 uh, not too long ago that they do support this closure. Thank you. Anything further? Hey, Commissioner Sinto has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number 25. Um, I'll second it. Um, one quick question uh, for our executive officer. Give, do we need, I guess nothing is amended here, uh, Mr. Campos, because we're, we just clarified the record from something that was stated preliminarily in the board report. But because that we're not uh, tinkering with the recommendations, uh, there's no amendment. Would that be right? That is correct. Okay. Yes. Um, so then we adopt, the motion is to adopt it as is, uh, seconded. Uh, any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 25. Any issue sending it forthwith? We'll send number 25 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone uh, that worked on this. We appreciate it. Um, agenda item number 24. Requested contract award, Council Districts 8 and 15. A secondary sewer renewal program Imperial Highway and Avalon Boulevard, recommending, this is from the Bureau of Engineering and the Bureau of Contract Administration, recommending that the board declare Ramona Incorporated the first low bidder to be the lowest responsive responsible bidder and award them a contract for the project for $1,632,696 and secondly, authorize the president or two members of the Board of Public Works to execute the contract for approval as to form once it has been obtained from the city attorney, Doug Irvine on 24. Good morning, sir. Uh, thank you, President James. Uh, again, my name is Doug Irvin. I'm the project manager on the Accelerated Sewer Repair Program Z18B uh, project. Uh, we're, the staff is recommending that the board declare Ramona as the first slow and responsive bidder on this project. Uh, their bid was $1.63 million for this project. Uh, we're also requesting that the president and or two members of the board to execute the contract on this particular project. Um, a little background on the project. On July 20th, 2016, we received four bids for the project. Uh, and again, Ramona was the, the low bidder on the project. The project entails 4.85 reach miles of 8, 12, and 15 inch sewers to be repaired or rehabilitated as part of our sewer program. Um, the contract duration is 308 days. Let's fall down. Um, 
Uh, the city engineer's estimate for this particular project was $2.1 million. Um, so Ramona's bid was uh, 22.9% uh, lower than the city engineer's estimate. Okay, as part of the um, uh, contract processing, the project was advertised with the 4% uh, MBEs, the 2% uh, WBEs, and the 25% SBEs. Due to Ramona's uh, contract pledge and outreach, uh, we're not meeting those participation levels. The uh, MBE is 0.6%, uh, the WBE is 0%, however, the SBEs is exceeding the amount, which is the 35.25%. Um, the mandatory sub-minimum sub -mandatory sub contracting of 25%, uh, we exceeded that. The uh, pledge is for 39.8% for the contract. Um, as you are aware, Ramona has uh, worked for this on uh, several cities projects in the past and so we have this particular project that they're looking at getting awarded to also um, we have obtained the approval from the uh, in, internal PRC group for the budget to be 2.9 million dollars including contingency and that was done back in February of 2016 and based on that, we are recommending that the board accept this pr project and award it to Ramona. Any questions on agenda item number 24? I don't have any questions on agenda item number 24. Uh, Commissioner Sintos uh, made a motion that we adopt agenda item number 24, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 24. Any issue sending 24 forthwith? We'll send number 24 forthwith. Um, Mr. Irvin, I see that you're here on number 23 as well. That would make sense. Bureau of Engineering and Bureau of Contract Administration, Council Districts 1 and 13. Contract Award, Secondary Sewer Renewal Program, Temple Street and Glendale Boulevard. Recommending that the board declare Ramona once again, first low bidder, to be the lowest responsive, responsible bidder and award them a contract for the project for $2,631,080. And secondly, authorize myself or two members of the Board of Public Works to execute the contract after approval as to form has been obtained by the city attorney, Mr. Irvin, on 23. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm here requesting Ramona be declared the first low bidder and lowest responsive bidder on this pr project. Um, on this particular project, we received five bids on August 17, 2016, which Ramona was the lowest bidder. Um, the project is looking at repairing 3.68 miles of eight six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 15 inch sewer lines in the central district area of Los Angeles, um, as in council districts one and 13. Uh, the particular project length is 300 calendar days versus SSZ18B, uh, which is 308 calendar days. Um, the city engineer's estimate on this project was uh, $3.24 uh, million which results in the uh, Ramona having a low, lower bid of 18.7% than what the city estimated. Um, the business, uh, the uh, participation levels, again, um, were the 4% for me, uh, MBEs, 2% for WBEs, 25% for SBEs, and Ramona's uh, pledge again was less at 1.4% MBE, 0% for WBE, and 45% for SBEs. Um, and the minimum subcontracting, uh, they've had a 27% uh, participation level there, or pledge. And so, again, on PRC approval, we have received uh, approval for a total budget, including contingency of 4.1 million, and that was on uh, February 10th of 2016. Any questions on number 23? 
I don't have any questions either. Commissioner Sintel's made a motion that we adopt agenda item number 23. Um, I'll second it. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 23. Thank you, sir. Thank you very um, much. Any issue sending number 23 forthwith? We'll send number 23 forthwith. Agenda item uh, number 22, Council District 1, recommending that the board authorize the Office of Community Beautification to execute a contract amendment with the Los Angeles Conservation Corps in the amount of $180,000 to provide cleanup and community beautification services in Council District Number 1. Mr. Roch, welcome, sir. Good morning, Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification. Um, and I will present, uh, if okay, both items 21 and 22 at the same time. We'll have to vote uh, on them separately, but you're here, so go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're both, uh, both related. Both of these are uh, requesting authorization to execute contract amendments with the Los Angeles Conservation Corps for clean and green services during the current fiscal year. Um, the total amount of the one-year services for basic clean and green is uh, $1,751,494. Of this amount, $1 million has been transferred from the uh, General City Purposes Fund uh, with funds provided by the Bureau of Sanitation. Uh, the $751,494 uh, is a portion of the uh, OCB uh, budget. At the time of the board report, only a portion of those funds had been uh, actually transferred into the board's contractual services account, uh, as stated in the board report. But at this point, all funds have been received, and so we will be able to uh, you know, fully execute the, the contract with the full amount of funds. Uh, the LACC Clean and Green program hires youth ages 13 to 17 to provide cleanup and beautification services on a citywide basis. Typical services include alley cleanup, weed abatement, tree care, support of public outreach events, public information events, uh, and, and other as needed uh, um, services. On average, 350 Los Angeles youth are hired every year uh, through the Clean and Green program. These youth work on weekends as well as when they are on um, breaks from school. Uh, in addition to hiring and providing jobs, the LA Conservation Corps provides career and other counseling services to the youth, job skills, work experience, and most importantly, a decent income. Um, Additionally, uh, we're asking uh, um, for authority on a, a sort of supplemental uh, contract amendment with this. This is the uh, River Keepers slash Council District 1 cleanup, which provides a extra layer of services into one of the most highly impacted parts of the city, and that's Council District 1. Uh, provides for some additional hiring of clean and green students uh, to work in that district specifically, and those youth are residents of Council District 1 as well. Um, it also contains a component of providing cleanup services along a stretch of the Los Angeles River and some of the adjacent streets uh, located in Council District 1, and occasionally providing uh, docent services during some of the busy times of year along the LA River. Uh, we do uh, request uh, approval of both uh, these items, and uh, uh, especially Commissioner James, the contract is uh, waiting your signature in your office. I know LACC is uh, in urgent need of uh, funding as this does uh, go back to services provided beginning July 1st, and so uh, thank you very much for your attention. Well, I saw it on my way in this morning, so um, I'll I gave be it to Cindy it. with special instructions I'll, I'll to be tell you. Right, it on, my, yeah. on my, my way out of this door, so you'll have it um, uh, momentarily after the conclusion of the board. Um, first, let me go ahead and well, let's go ahead and take care of the the one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Any questions on agenda item number twenty two, Commissioner uh, Repenning? Hi, hi, Paul. Thank you again for all your all the work that that you guys of do course. at OCB. Um, and I want to thank uh, the LA Conservation Corps, hi, um, for the work that they do. They're really a great partner um, uh, with, for us with the city, uh, the work that they do in um, working with youth and workforce development is really a great part of our partnership with them. Um, and uh, I just have a couple of questions. Um, the first pertains specifically to the river-related cleanup that, the, that, that Clean and Green is going to be doing. 
Um, I just want to say that it's really important that we train the kids in safety. Um, going around and near the river, um, we had unfortunately um, a, a, a tragic incident uh, with a youth who fell into the river. Um, was it previously? I think it was earlier this year. Um, so we need to make sure that they understand uh, that they need to be really careful around the water, um, even if it doesn't look very deep. Um, and then I also, you know, just in terms of the water quality issues um, that we've been that we've been working with the community on, um, making sure that they understand um, not to, you know, play in the water, et cetera. Um, so those are a couple of points related to the river-related work that they're going to be doing. And I also just wanted to talk about integration with. Um, the Clean Streets program, and I see sanitation is here. I know you guys have been working um, uh, to just get fully integrated, um, uh, and especially in terms of making sure that the work that um, that your contractors are doing, um, being registered in our 311 system as work that we have performed, even if it's not um, closing out a, a, a customer request. Um, making sure, you know, given the, da the data issues that we all went through in the summer of 2015, um, making sure that we're getting credit for the work that we're performing and funding um, so that um, we have a full understanding. And as well, um, for, for our own work, um, knowing, you know, what work is getting done so that we don't end up sending, you know, um, so, that it's, so that it's coordinated. Um, so can you speak um, to that yeah. second point? So, so um we do absolutely track, and, and Conservation Corps provides us on a monthly uh, basis when they submit their invoices, all their backup documentation of uh, uh, all the locations that they cleaned, uh, the type of work that they did, number of trash bags collected, number of uh, workers and workers' hours and stuff like that. Um, so we do have that, all that information. It is kept separate from the Clean Streets LA information as it is um, you know, funded from a different pool of money and it's not um, directly related funding-wise to Clean Streets Los Angeles, although certainly, I mean, it's, it's similar type of work and we can absolutely consolidate both numbers if we're ever looking for, you know, the full amount of, you know, trash bags or hours spent or number of valleys cleaned or something like that. We would definitely include the uh, clean and green work as well. LA Conservation Corps does have a, a uh, crew funded by the Clean Streets LA directly as one of the OCB contractors, um, in w which does not utilize the, the youth but more adults to provide those types of weed abatement, bulky item, uh, litter cleanup services. So, and, and that obviously is directly uh, kept as part of the Clean Streets LA um, statistics that, that we're keeping for all of our contractors. And then um, finally, I just uh, wanted to uh, mention that we're, we're in the process of launching our Clean Streets Challenge um, this fall. And so I think we will have um, uh, authorized and funded over 40 separate cleanup projects around the city. And so I'm actually, when we finish up, going to talk um, to Colin and Jen about, about s seeing if there's a, we can integrate actually some of the um, clean and green teams into into those projects. Um, that would be terrific. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner Repenny. Anything further? Uh, so is that a motion on agenda item 23 uh, by Commissioner Repenny, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any objection? With a 22. Oh, 22. I'm sorry. Yes, on 22. Um, a motion by uh, Commissioner Repenny, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 22. Any issue sending it forthwith? We'll send 22 forthwith. Um, I'm going to call 21, although I think we've had the discussion on it, recommending that the board authorize the Office of Community Beautification to execute a contract amendment with Los Angeles Conservation Corps in the amount of $1,751,494 to fund the Clean and Green program during fiscal year 2016-17. Mr. Roch described uh, the breakdown of those funds already. Uh, any questions regarding agenda item number 21? Anything further? Um, is there a motion on number 21 by Commissioner Repenning? I'll second it along with... Commissioner Sacinto and Davis, so that will be the order. Any issues sending it forthwith? We'll send number 21 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, and your contracts will be signed after the meeting. Thank you. If you want to come by and pick it's them up. Greatly appreciate it. All right. Uh, agenda item number 20, Council Districts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13, and 14. 
recommending the board approve and execute the proposed Sister River Resolution between the City of Los Angeles, as represented by the Board of Public Works, and the Pasig River, did I say that correctly? Pasig. Pasig River uh, Rehabilitation Commission, the PRRC, of the Republic of the Philippines to share knowledge and expertise related to urban river re revitalization. Michael Affelt and Commissioner Jacinto. Michael, go ahead, sir. Thank you, President James, Commissioner's representatives. Uh, the item before you is request for authority to execute a sister river resolution between City of Los Angeles and the Pacific River Rehabilitation Commission of the Re Republic of the Philippines. The uh, sister river agreements or resolutions are meant to foster cultural connection, information sharing, and uh, better understanding of the issues facing uh, uh, Los Angeles and other places around the world who are revitalizing their precious waterways. Uh, this is the fifth agreement or a resolution that we are entering into with the Sister River. The first four were the Chongachan River in South Korea, the Yarkon River in Israel, the Isar River in Germany, and the Rota River in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Um, so with your approval today, later this month, a uh, the, the agreement or resolution, I should say, would be executed with a delegation from the commission from the Philippines who are coming to visit Los Angeles this month. Thank you. Commissioner Sinto, I see your fingerprints on this somehow. Yeah, um, possibly. So uh, perhaps we'll, uh, we'll hear from you on possibly. that. Possibly. First, <laughs> thank you, President James. I want to thank Michael and Amalia for their incredible work in, in a, a, a short amount of time, uh, originally started by Dr. Carol Armstrong, but all this was instigated by uh, Vice President uh, um, Heather Penning's invitation to me last summer when we went on a kayaking trip through the LA River and to experience our LA River as a recreational uh, part of our city. And that was a great impetus to understand how we can elevate and continue to develop the river uh, as part of LA's uh, plan moving forward uh, with One Water, with all the waste water and all the storm water. So I think it's a very important um, opportunity to elevate our iconic river. In the, uh, and the Pasig River is also an iconic river upon which the city of Manila was born. It is, we have the largest concentration of Filipinos outside of the Philippines here in Southern California, in the city of Los Angeles. So all these uh, confluences, if you will, are important um, markers to be able to celebrate. And uh, so I thank you all for, um, for your work on this. And it's good for our city. It's good for our mayor's plan for our river. Um, and I wholeheartedly support this and ask for your support as well. Great. Thank you. Any further questions? Commissioner Penning. I just want to uh, chime in uh, and um, thank uh, Commissioner Jacinto for his leadership on this. I think this is a great um, initiative, a great way to uh, connect with a country um, that is really important to LA. And so, and, and addition, in addition to just continuing to expose uh, a new, new parts of our, our city to, in our community to the river, so folks understand what a treasure that we have here. So thank you so much for all the work you've been doing, and I look forward to celebrating with you next Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone. So that, I'll take that as a motion from Commissioner Sinto, seconded by Commissioner Repenning. Uh, any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 20. Thank you, Mr. Raffel. Any issue sending it forthwith? We'll send number 20 forthwith. Agenda item number 19, Council District 1. Requested hardship waiver from the above ground facility ordinance for underground requirement adjacent to 3349 East uh, Maceo Street, Council District 1, I think I said that already, recommending the board first. Approve the request for a hardship waiver from the below grade requirement of the Los Angeles Municipal Code Section 62.08.2.A uh, adjacent to 3349 East Maceo Street. And second, authorize AT&T to install a cabinet 40.5 inches high by 42.8 inches wide by 19.9 .9 inches deep in the public right-of-way adjacent to 3349 East Maceo Street. No, Arce. Good morning, sir. Good how do morning. Say, how, do you, how do you say your last name? Arce. Arce. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Yes, no, Arce with the Bureau of Engineering. I'm in the utility permit group, which also includes uh, overseeing the above-ground facility installations. So yes, the item before us is uh, 3349 East Maceo Street. It's approximately one mile north of the 110 and the 5 interchange, not too far from here. And <clears throat> so I'm covering today for Mr. Jeff Ledoux, who I'm sure you see almost weekly, or about weekly. He's taking a vacation day today, well-deserved vacation day. Well, good and, for Mr. Ledoux. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so Well-deserved. Uh, Normally, uh, he may cover this part, but he, as you all know, probably 62.08, Municipal Code 62.08 covers 
the above ground facilities. Within 62.08, there's a section that requires undergrounding of above ground facilities in certain areas. Uh, 3349 East Maceo is in one of these areas. The same section, uh, which is 62.08 subsection two, also gives the Board of Public Works the authority to waive the below grade requirement if it finds that technical or financial hardship would result from imposition of these requirements. As a result, at and prepared a report, submitted the report. They are indicating a technical hardship from meeting this requirement. Basically, it would require a very large vault to replace a uh, above ground facility that is, like you were saying, it's only about three and a half feet tall. The underground vault is much, much larger. Uh, in this area, this proposed area, the right of way is only about 10 feet from the curb face to the property line. So as a result, we have done our review and determined, um, that, well, before that, we also went ahead and we sent out notifications to the adjoining property and adjacent properties where we, uh, where at and proposes to install this above ground facility. There was no opposition received from the council district, from the neighborhood council or the property owners. So that plus the fact that there is definitely a hardship waiver, uh, BOE is recommending that the hardship waiver be, uh, hardship request be uh, approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arcia. Yeah, that's um, very helpful. Thank you for the explanation and the follow-up. Uh, any questions on agenda item number 19? I don't have any questions. Commissioner Ascendo has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number 19. Thank I'll you. second it. Any objection? Without objection, we will adopt number 19. Any issue sending it forthwith? We'll send number 19 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Ledoux will be good to, glad to know you did a nice job in his absence. Thank you. Agenda item number 18, Council District 14. Um, task order solicitation number two to Tetra Tech Engineering and Consulting Services, recommending that the board authorize the city engineer to issue a revision of the task for solicitation number two to Tetra Tech Engineering and Consulting Services from the pre-qualified on-call consultants list, increasing the budget authority from $880,990 to $1,125,538 for design and construction support services in connection with the Soto Street Bridge over Mission Road and Huntington Drive Bridge removal and street realignment project, Dung Tran on number 18. I see that we have a representative from Tetra Tech in the audience if we have any questions. Yes. Um, good morning. My name is Dung Tran. I'm with the Bureau of Engineering Bridge Improvement Program. Um, this board report is to request for the authority uh, for the city engineer to issue a revision of the task order solicitation number two to Tetra Tech to increase the budget uh, from authority from $880,990 to $1,125,538 for the continued design and construction support services to complete um, the um, Soto Bridge uh, removal project this project is to remove the existing um, substandard bridge, realign the street, uh, creating two signalized intersections um, and a landscape area, which is a major thoroughfare from downtown to um, Arcadia, Pasadena. Currently, the uh, construction of this project is at approximately 75% complete. Uh, we anticipate uh, the project will be completed by um, early uh, 2017. The remaining work includes um, the sidewalk and street improvement on the west side of Huntington Drive, um, the median islands, and the landscape area. Um, the additional scope of work are mainly due to unforeseen um, conditions encountered during construction. Uh, such as unrecorded utilities, uh, which require revision uh, of the design, um, revision of traffic control plans to expedite the construction sequence, revision of the landscaping plans in order to meet the Bureau of Street Services maintenance requirements, additional geotesting uh, and vibration monitoring while we're doing um, 
sidewalk removal adjacent to private properties. The additional increase of this request is, um, has been approved, um, was previously approved by the Seismic Governance Committee and the City Council. Uh, the Bureau of Engineering will continue to uh, request for federal participation. Uh, typically, the Fed will uh, reimburse 88% of this um, additional increase. Um, therefore, the Bureau of Engineering requests for the authority to increase the... Um, the uh, I would just add, for the record, so it's clear in case it wasn't already, in, in it, some of the other, at least one additional unforeseen circumstance was asphalt pavement that was found Right. Uh, during um, during prior removal and, excava and excavation work. So in addition to utilities that it's not uncommon that we find them, we don't necessarily know that they're there, but there was some additional asphalt removal work that had to happen? Yes, it had to happen. Um, what happened is um, there's another street underneath the street. As we uh, dig about two feet down, uh, I think um, the street was paved over over the years and uh, that was the uh, unexpected, unforeseen conditions that we encountered during construction. Commissioner Penning. Um, just uh, for the record, you are expecting to be done by early 2017. That is correct. So, and you're 75% complete, so hopefully this would be it as far as increasing the budget. Uh, exactly. Uh, we, we've been working uh, closely, tracking all the additional scope of work, and we're hoping that this is it. This will bring the project to completion. Okay. I do want to say I appreciate the um, exceedance of our goal for the disadvantaged business um, enterprise participation, and I appreciate the in inclusion of Northeast Trees, which is a great nonprofit that um, I think is uh, it's nice to see uh, that they're working with here. Thank you. And so uh, upon the, I wouldn't say eminent, but almost eminent completion of the project in early 2017, it's just hard to believe that 2017 is right around the corner. Yes. Um, but that said, um, the uh, federal reimbursement you said will be 88%? Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. Uh, anything further? Is there a motion on number 18 by Commissioner Asento, uh, seconded by Commissioner Repenning. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number 18. Any issues sending it forthwith? We will send number 18 forthwith. Thank you, sir. Other than general public comment, Mr. Campos, have we cleared the desk? Uh, no, this takes you back to the approval of the minutes oh, and I have then minutes public to comment. Approve. Okay, thank you for that. Um, let me figure out where they are. Minutes from the meeting of Wednesday, September 21st, 2016. Is there a second to my motion to approve those meeting minutes by Commissioners Repenning and Davis? Any objection? Without objection, we'll approve those meeting minutes. Now all I have left is general public comment. Leah Renee has a general public comment card. Hi, Leah Renee. I just want to bring to your attention that I have, um, uh, there's a, work being done in the Pacific Palisades coastal bluffs and it's being done without permits and it's being done without geotechnical review and there's been issues found in there and there when I've spoken to plan check they said no there are no permits I, I went to your city office I went to your West Los Angeles offices and so what I did is I, I made a memorandum of the facts I verified it and I I gave it to um, Commissioner am I saying your name correctly had, had, Jacinto, thank you. I did give it to Commissioner Jacinto. I did it. He asked me to verify it. I did go and I verified it that there are no permits. And um, the sanitation department asked me to file a complaint today, but I thought I'd let you know first. I also gave you a DVD with all 21 exhibits, and I made you a copy, each one of you, and I outlined it in a memorandum so you have it for your records. It's extraordinarily important because it's on a Pacific Palisades coastal bluff. I don't want the public to have to pay for a, a failure of the bluff. Um, and since there's been issues that are not being organized for the public, um, I wanted you to have at least some of the, the documents I have. So anyway, memorandum and 21 exhibits on a DVD for you. And um, just so you, we all are aware of the same facts. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, no other speaker cards this morning. We will close general public comment. Mr. Campos, have we cleared the desk? That has, yes. Okay, then we are adjourned with um, the exception of a brief management meeting that will take place now in the conference room, and then we'll move along. Thank you. We are adjourned.